All right, and we're Dr. Mohsen Mazari for the next uh, video in our Q and A's for the Victor Virtual Science Fair. Thank you for joining us uh, as part of our science fair. Um, without further ado, I suppose, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, my name is Mo Mazari. I'm a uh, doctor in histopathology um, and I, I work in, in Manchester. Um, histopathology is, is a branch of medicine which involves um, diagnosis uh, and treatment management of patients. So essentially I'm involved in the diagnosis of cancers uh, and other non-cancerous diseases from samples that are taken from patients uh, when they present with, with certain uh, conditions. Um, as, as part of that process, uh, the, the, tissue, the tissue that's taken is processed in the lab uh, by a big team of biomedical scientists. Um, and eventually a slide is produced, uh, which I look at under the microscope to determine what's going on in, in, in the tissues, determine what sort of abnormality there is, whether there's cancer there, whether there's an, there isn't any cancer, whether there's inflammation there, or, or whether we can find another cause of what's going on. And then based on that, the, the, the clinical teams are um, helped to kind of find the, the patient management and, and decide what to do uh, with the patient and how to treat the, the condition best. So that's kind of... Uh, broadly what I do. Um, the other aspect of, of, um, of our job includes um, looking at samples of, of people who have had cancer specimens taken out of their body to see how far the cancer is spread and that helps to determine um, how to, to further treat the patient so whether they need any extra chemotherapy, any extra surgery or any extra radiotherapy and again, we do that in combination with a, with a big team of, of uh, doctors and nurses and other healthcare staff um, who look after the, look after the patients in a, in a joint multidisciplinary team meeting. So it's quite an in, intense uh, field that you, that you work in. Um, what, what, what does an average, I'm not going to say day because there's quite a lot to your, to your role, yes. there, but what might an average week look like for you? So the average week, um, it's, it, as I said, it's, there isn't really an average or a standard <laughs> week that, that we do. Um, everything is, is uh, slightly up in there, particularly in, the, in current times. Um, but uh, my time is split mainly between um, reporting specimens and reporting slides, um, doing a lot of teaching because uh, I'm involved in teaching junior doctors and also uh, biomedical scientists as well uh, at the university to help kind of further their careers. Um, and also doing some kind of senior management roles as well within the hospital, um, which I had the opportunity to, to take on recently. Um, so those kind of three things are, are, the, are the, the broad spectrum of, of what a, a, a week would look like. And, and it, depending on any, any one week, the proportions of which I'm doing those things uh, varies um, depending on what, what's going on in the hospital. Um, one, one thing I didn't mention earlier, uh, which I also do, is I also take part on the, the, the autopsy and post-mortem rotor as well. And that's investigating um, causes of death for people that that um, that you know people, there isn't a diagnosis as to why they've died or if there's any any concerns from the family or anything. We can investigate that and make sure that, that everything has has gone according to plan um, and nothing's gone wrong in the in the care. Yeah, wow, so that that is quite a varied uh, uh, range of roles. <laughs> yes, uh, we we um, as part of the Q and A's that we've done, we 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 did one with a medical student who's halfway through her medical degree and you said you did yeah. a bit of teaching um it's not a it's not a pathway that you go into um so, sort of non-committed or light-hearted it's something that you've got to be really committed to um not necessarily with an end goal in sight but certainly with with a with a with an end goal of, of working in medicine in sight when when you were going through that process was was this what you wanted to go into or were, were there other areas that you looked into yeah, so so um, when I was starting off applying for medical school, um, I didn't know I wanted to be a histopathologist at the end of it. I think very few people know where they want to end up um, as, a, as a career when they go into medicine. Um, most people have a, a common goal of wanting to kind of help patients enjoy uh, learning about disease processes and, and how the human body works. Uh, and then they develop an interest um, in, the, in, in the various specialties as they, they, pr they progress through medical school. And usually, in fact, after they get out of medical school and start working, is when they decide what the, what they want to do with their lives and, and what fits in best and what they're interested in, and that's similar to what happened to me. I, I did uh, um, about a year and a half in surgery um, before deciding that, that wasn't for me, and I came into pathology after that, uh, and have never looked back. Of really enjoying the, the the kind of job and the challenges that, that we see on a daily basis. And how do you see it now from the teaching side of things and, and working with students and um, and where they're at with their sort of journeys with it all? 
Yeah, it is very interesting. I think things have things have obviously moved on since I was in, in medical school and, and in the school. Uh, there's a lot more technology involved in the teaching and a lot more blended learning, um, particularly in, in, in the current last year year or so with, with the whole COVID pandemic. There's been a lot of online teaching and all the lectures that I've been giving in the last year have been essentially online, uh, which is quite challenging uh, from a presenter's point of view because you're basically looking at screen and trying to gauge people's um, reactions based on on... Uh, often blank screens uh, so, so it's a bit it's a bit tricky um, but I think the opportunities are uh, expanding because of the online online nature of the teaching there's a lot of stuff available um, and a lot more accessible to, to a lot, lot more people um, so hopefully that will be a, a, a legacy of this um, that will carry on forward and at least there'll be an opportunity to record things and keep them online in addition to, to live sessions uh, for students to look, look back on, uh, and, and, and use uh, to their advantage in the future hopefully. Yeah, and I think you're right. Even sort of 12 months ago, sort of doing doing what we're doing right now, a Zoom conversation was fairly foreign to most people, and yes. now it's sort of part of everyday everyday working life. And a lot yeah. a lot of the um, young people watching this would have spent almost a whole year doing homeschooling um, yeah. through through Google Classroom or whatever it happens to be. Yes. Um, and they're doing their GCSEs and A levels. What advice would you give to them um, as 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 a young person sort of looking to perhaps go into this area as a career? Hmm. I think um, uh, follow your dreams. I think it's a very it's a very cliched comment, but um, it's very easy as a as a, a young student to get daunted by uh, the science subjects and the STEM subjects and say they're not for me, um, or you feel as though that they're a bit too daunting to take on. Uh, but if you're interested in the subject, uh, there's no reason why you can't progress progress to, to kind of further studies and university degrees in those subjects and make a career out of things. Um, and it, it's uh, there's a huge variety of potential careers um, that, that, you, that you can go into having done you know, STEM subjects at university um, or, or at school uh, and you shouldn't limit yourself to think oh well I, I can't do this if you if you if you've got an inkling for things go for it um, and, and there will be support available to help you through uh, in the various stages uh, and hopefully to fulfill your potential. I, I think that's a, a very good piece of advice to end on as well. Th thank you very much for, for joining us as part of the science fair. No problem at all.